Yeah. Um, so I think I'll move on because we, we talked about indie games for a second here, and there's one game I want to talk about in particular. Uh, when Rhyme was announced it was going to have a physical version with Nintendo Switch, we found out that it was going to end up costing $39.99, both on digital and physical, which, again, there's a lot of people that argue whether digital and physical should even cost the same price. But that's a debate for another time. The point was is that this game at that time costed $10 more on the Nintendo Switch, both digital or physical, than any other platform, because it's a multi-platform indie game. Um, and at the, at the time, people were saying, oh, it's the Nintendo tax. Mm-hmm. Nintendo is, one, cartridges are more expensive, so... And it, the thing is, is, like, Rhyme is only coming physically on the Switch. So it's like, I, I don't know if cartridge price has anything to do with it. it. They don't have a physical version on the other consoles. Yeah. Um, but whatever, so you have that, and then also... Um, it kind of encompasses the whole uh, idea that maybe Nintendo charges a higher premium for games. Like, yeah. like yeah. maybe Sony and Microsoft, only, their royalty fee is only $2 per game, but Nintendo's like, no, we need 15 Yeah, So they're definitely. offsetting it by charging $10 more. That, that's the idea. We, no one knows. All this stuff is under NDAs. So no one's ever going to know unless someone wants to get fired and never get a job in the industry again. Um, ever going to know the exact percentages these royalties are. We just have estimates out there. Um, that was the presumed thing. Well, then they came out this week, and they were like, hey, look, we heard the backlash. We heard the complaints. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to drop the digital price down to twenty nine ninety nine, so it has pricing parity with the other systems. We're going to leave the physical version at thirty nine ninety nine, but we're going to include a download code with it that lets you download the entire soundtrack off of wherever they're, they're putting yeah. it up. I can't remember. Yeah. It's a pretty reputable site. It's a big site. I just don't remember the name of it right now. Um... So, uh, and they're also selling that soundtrack separately for ten dollars. So basically, you're you know you're you're getting the full value of the game if you bought a digital plus the soundtrack, and you're just getting it all together at once with physical. Uh, they're adding more value to the physical, as it were. Uh, again, that doesn't mean there's not a Nintendo tax because get, because the digital price is cheap, but now the physical still not, and it's like we can't. It's almost like we can't drop the price on that. But you know what we can do? We can give away a soundtrack that costs us nothing. Right. Pretty um, much. But. At the same point, uh, they they came out and said the reason that we had this problem with pricing is that they apparently invested quite a bit of money to even port the thing to Switch in the first place. That's what the guy said. And um, they, it's, it was something about how they said they don't want to sell for a loss, but it's interesting to me when, when, when publishers say this, uh, that you don't want to sell for a loss on a game. Um, if you make any sort of money back on that game, Right, so say for that twenty nine ninety nine digital between Nintendo's cut and whoever else you have to pay out a publisher plus whoever else. Right. Say the, the developer kickback is only two dollars on that game, which would be absolutely horrid. Yeah. But if you sell a million, you just made two million bucks off the game. So how yeah. is that selling at a loss? Yeah. Um, selling at a loss would be where you make zero money or you make negative money per se, and that never happens. Right. You always make something back on the game. Yeah. Um, that's why I always feel like it's always been when people say selling for a loss. But uh, I, I think it's more apt to say that they don't think they're going to sell enough mm-hmm. to justify how much it costs them to port the game. Um, and I think that's what they mean by selling for a loss, but they just don't say it. Right. And, again, we don't, you don't know. We don't know what it's going to sell. But I always th- felt like if you have that fear, why are you releasing a physical version in the first place? Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, that, yeah. I don't know. I mean, that that's kind of my thing. It's like, yeah, you're so afraid of it, you're releasing a physical version, which is more expensive and more risky. Um, but I think I think Rhyme's going to do okay. From, from all we've heard about it, it's an absolutely fantastic game. If you really like Breath of the Wild, Rhyme's right up that alley. You know, it's a lot shorter, only five to eight hours, but, you know, it's an indie game. You know, right, 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 right. You're, you're not paying 60 bucks for it, so you're not right, going to get a $60 exactly. yeah. type of triple experience. Um, but I'm, I know I'm probably planning to pick it up. I'll probably end up getting it digital. I like physical. I like having the boxes and everything. Yeah, in the car. Like, yeah but, definitely. But I don't know if I really care about, about the soundtrack. Right. Um, enough to want to pay 10 extra bucks just to right. have a physical version around. Right. But we'll see. I yeah. say that now, and then I end up getting it because I just see it on the store shelf. Yeah, and I right. want it. Yeah. Um, and w- what I actually find really cool about the Nintendo Switch is um, just keeping with that indie game theme. You know, one of the indie games I own is The Binding of Isaac after Earth Plus, and that has a physical version on the Switch. So I'm almost wondering, like, the, it's not unheard of for indie games to eventually come out 
as a physical version. But usually that happens after they've been highly successful on the platform. Like, oh, we sold, you know, half a million copies on PlayStation 4. Well, now we got kind of a, a publishing deal with, with Sony and, and we'll release a physical version because we think we can get another 100,000 sales or something by yeah. the physical version. Right. But here we are on the Switch and, like, I'll, here's a couple indie games that are just coming out right away as physical day one. Mm-hmm. And it's like, huh. Is that Nintendo Tax a thing? Because the, the whole reason that indies avoid physical releases because of the risk and the cost, and here cartridges supposedly cost more, and there's a you know a loss to consider, and yet more indie games seem to be coming out day one. I'm, I'm as physical. Yeah, games. I'm just wondering how much difference in price there is now with how small these cartridges are compared to a CD. Well, it's I not mean, the size, right? It CDs are cheap as heck. They literally cost right, like yeah. half a cent to yeah. make one of them. Okay. Yeah. These these carts cost significantly more. You have a board in there plus yeah, the plastic. Yeah, true, true. Um, plus whatever memory. You know, the memory size of the cart is going to affect how much the cart costs. True, true. Um, so the carts undoubtedly cost more than the disc, but the idea was that, conversely, you save money on packaging because these packages are, I'd say, two-thirds the size of a normal DVD yeah. case. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I don't really know if you save much packaging over some of the PlayStation 4 cases that are like, I mean, they're like this. Yeah. So they're a little shorter, but they're fatter because they fit a disc. Um, but that was the idea anyways. And then when you open up those cases, yeah, it's a lot of dead space. Yeah. There is yeah, room is. for a little manual. And yep. to be fair, like, Bison and it came with a manual. So, like, some games have manuals. Um, not many yet, but some do. But um, I don't know. I, I think Nintendo didn't want to go but too the, small. I was going to say, at the same point might be time. Like, oh, people are going to think it's a 3DS game. Well, not they even that. They wanted like, their unique form factor. Right, not even that. It's eventually possibly even lose the box because it's that small. <laughs> oh, no. But people don't lose the 3DS boxes, do they? Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know where any of mine are. <laughs> You're an exception. Yeah. It's not like you have a shelf you put it all on like you probably should. Yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> it's not like you have kids, man. You can't find a little corner in your room that just stack all your gaming shit. Yeah, right. Um. Anyways, I just thought it was interesting that uh, they released at a higher price point because of fan backlash. They dropped it on one end and then gave more for the value. On the physical end. Um, I mean, that's good. Uh, it doesn't mean there's not going to be pricing problems with with this kind of stuff in the future for indies. Um, but, I don't know. The Nintendo tax, is it real? Is it not? What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments. None of us know. We're never going to know publicly. We might get heavy hints at times that one exists, but we would... NDAs, man. No one, right. wants, to, no one right. wants to lose their job. Oh, yeah. No, Cause, no, cause, no. Like, these are the kind of NDAs when people are like, oh, why don't we know? It's because these are the kind of NDAs that if you break them, it's not just losing your job. You become unhirable. Right. Because yeah. no one can trust you with any company secret if you release a secret like that. Right. Like what the exact royalty fees are. Um, 